Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next week to 10 days. For today's second video, uh, which takes us around 29th of June, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended uh, GFS and ECM ensembles. They run to around a couple of weeks. That takes into early July. And we'll have a look at CFS V2, of course, uh, for the uh, next month, as we usually do with week 10 day video updates. So we've got uh, the five day forecast is out there now. Um, it's going to be uh, second down actually as we head towards the weekend. And then early next week, it's going to start to get quite hot potentially down in the southeast. And that could well set the scene now uh, for next week to become hotter, but also unstable. So there could be some thunder on the way. And talking of thunder, we'll start off by having a little bit of color pictures that people sent through from last night's thunderstorms. Yes, there were thunderstorms around last night, not as widespread perhaps as uh, we was anticipating. Although when I did Stormwatch the other night, I did say that I've got my doubts about it really because uh, the cape didn't look particularly uh, cape and lifted, which you can back to potentially, it didn't look particularly conducive to thunder. And I said that it, the greatest risk would risk would be primarily areas in the far south and southeast uh, where we're closest to the storms over France because there was really good convective potential for France uh, into the low countries so those areas that are closest to France uh, uh, would have the greatest chance of the storm surviving the hop over the channel but for the rest of us it never really looked all that conducive for like in front of due to the poor levels of convective potential and that's how it's turned out but anyway these things happen thunder storms are very difficult to forecast uh in this country actually it's really harder to forecast thunder storms than it is for snow and snow is pretty hard to forecast a lot of the time as well but uh, thunder is just about the hardest sort of weather element to forecast for with uh, many, many forecasts going awry for convective potential. Anyway, there were storms around last night, so that's where we're going to start off with for today's uh, video. So this picture had been sent through by Chaley Stowe uh, in Hailsham. So there were some big uh, lightning and thunderstorms going on in uh, Hailsham. Big thank to Chaley for sending that one through. This one is from Liam Kenwood in Maidstone. So again, you see it's right down in that far southeastern corner where the storms were. Uh, tremendous lightning uh, there. Got a couple of pictures from Liam. That's proper fork lightning uh, going down from the sky to the ground there in uh, Maidstone. So it was really in that extreme southeastern corner where we had uh, the lightning and thunder last night elsewhere. It was a little bit of a damp squib, but uh, we may well have more opportunities uh, next week to get some lightning going. Because as I say, temperatures will be picking up next week. It's also looking very unstable. So uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble. Oh, and a big thank you to Charlie and Liam for sending those pictures through, by the way. And if you'd like to send through your pictures to uh, Gazovers, haven't featured in videos when we've got time, all you need to do is email them to gazovers at gmail.com or share them on our Facebook and Twitter pages. When we have the time, we're happy to feature those uh, pictures. Right, so as I was saying, um, onto GFS ensembles. Temperatures becoming warmer, but also quite unstable uh, next week. So the red line here is the 30-year other air temperature average for Sheffield, on it's Sheffield uh, today. Temperatures are going to, be going to be dropping actually over the next couple of days. It's going to go a bit cooler and fresher for uh, Thursday and for Friday. But over weekend into next week, temperatures are really lifting up, becoming much warmer. And those much warmer conditions extending uh, through much of next week uh, now. You will see there is quite a lot of scatter here. We have got several members of the GFS ensembles that are looking very hot, at least for a while, through the course of next week, somewhere between around 15 and 20 degrees at 850 HPA. That's going to be hot enough to get temperatures to 30 degrees and above if it comes off. There are cooler ensemble members that are down here, but I think the trend is increasingly towards hotter conditions through the course of next week, but also quite unsettled, you'll notice. So there's plenty of precipitation spikes uh, coming up. Uh, quite a bit of dry weather through the rest of this week now, 
and into the weekend. But from next week onwards, eh, next week onwards, we've got big precipitation spikes at the same time as it's warming up. So obviously, it's going to be a very, very unstable sort of warm up that we've got next week. And it does um, hint, anyway, at the possibility of not only some big rainfalls next week, but also some uh, very hot temperatures, humid air, and uh, maybe even some uh, big thunderstorms too. So might not have to wait uh, too long to have another go at getting some thunderstorms going. Looking quite unsettled then through to the first week of July even, but at the same time, temperatures do drop down a little bit. So it looks like this hotter weather for next week, probably not sustained into the first week of July when it's turning cooler and uh, fresher. Temperature anomalies from the 19th to 27th of June, very close to average. A little bit cooler than average still in the north, perhaps a little bit warmer than average down in the south. I suspect these are going to trend hotter over the next few days. So wait till we get to around Friday or Saturday. They will be looking a lot hotter than that, I think. Uh, precipitation anomalies from the 19th to the 27th of June. So for northern western parts, you're looking a little bit um, wetter than average. The far southeastern corner looks a little bit drier than average, as does the far northwest of Scotland. So it does look as well the wettest conditions likely to be in sort of central northern and more western parts of the country. That's how the GFS looks for Saturday. High pressure is building over the country on Saturday and it's dominated weather through to Sunday too. So it could be a nice weekend actually, I think. Temperatures won't be overly hot, but they will be warming up, kind of like to the mid-20s Celsius by Sunday afternoon in the southeast. And there should be a lot of dry weather on offer too. So Dust your barbecues down. You've probably not been able to use them for several uh, weeks. But I think this weekend will be a little bit of a barbecue weekend. And uh, not too bad at all. By the end of Sunday, though, this low pressure to the southwest of Ireland will probably be threatening heavy showers and thunderstorms into the far southwest of the country. And as you go into next week, we see this low pressure is maintained down to our southwest. There will be a front that moves north. It's probably a warm front uh, bringing thundery rain, particularly at the western side of the country. And it's behind that we start to drag in some very warm or even hot air from uh, the southeast. That's how we look on Thursday. High pressure only sitting to the north of the country, so uh, it's a little bit of a northern blocking feature still, actually. But it's just a way the wind is aligned. Everything is aligned to sort of pull a hot air up from the uh, south and from the southeast. There are little areas of low pressure uh, around too. So we've got one there across France. We've also got this main one here out to west of Biscay. So it all looks very unstable as the air is getting hotter. It's also uh, throwing quite a bit of instability our way and so this could generate risk of thunderstorms. Tuesday looks a hot day there for England and Wales. We've got the 15 Celsius ice firm covering the country. We do actually have the 20 Celsius ice firm just getting into the far southeastern corner. Uh, you remember yesterday we saw a remarkable GFS run where the upper air temperatures were going up to 25 Celsius at 858 pa. I've never seen that before. Um, that probably is not going to occur, but it does look as though that 20 Celsius ice fur might get into the far southeast. Probably enough to lift temperatures, certainly to the low 30s, depending on sunshine, might go a bit higher uh, than that, somewhere like Heathrow. That's Wednesday, and again, high pressure is to our north, bringing in these hot east or southeast winds but looking unstable there's troughs within the flow that's indicated by these little kinks in the isobars that we've got just here so where we get these kinks that's just little disturbances uh convergence lines maybe troughs that are forming within this very hot unstable bubble of air there's the upper air temperatures again we've got that 20 celsius ice firm just flirting with the southeast of England. 20 Celsius ice firm is important because in high summer, uh, so kind of like the very hottest summers like 2000, um, 2003, 1990, August 1990, it is the 20 Celsius ice firm that gets us to 100 Fahrenheit. Now, I don't think it'll get that hot this time because it's earlier in the summer and we've had a lot of rain. So to get those very, very extreme temperatures to 100 Fahrenheit, 
28 Celsius, you uh, typically have to have several weeks of quite hot weather preceding it to dry the ground out. I mean, kind of like getting an oven effect going where the, the ground just bakes, if you like, and gets hotter and hotter. And that's the way that you get to 100 Fahrenheit. But as we saw in, if you cut your mind back to the 1st of July 2015, we did get a 20 Celsius ice firm up from France on the 1st of July 2015. We got temperatures, I think, to 36 degrees at somewhere like Heathrow. So, uh, and that had been pretty cool and unsettled up to that point, and it was very cool and unsettled after that, just, just that one burst of heat throughout that summer. And that day, 1st of July 2015, really was the summer of 2015 and just that one day we did manage to get the temperature to 36 degrees but i think 100 fahrenheit is going to be very unlikely with this 20 Celsius ice one but it will be turning uh, much much hotter uh, next week most definitely but also with a chance of thunderstorms this is thursday when low pressure is over the top of the country and uh again yes very unstable so it actually generated kind of like a thundery low over the country and that could bring heavy showers thunderstorms possible in places as well so the risk of storms looks like it's growing through the course of next week if anything Upper air temperatures are still looking very, very warm to hot over on the eastern side because you're beginning to get a little bit fresher, though, out to the west. So as we go through to this Friday and then on into the weekend uh, of the 29th, 30th of June, um, and of course it's day 10, 29th of June, it's becoming cooler and fresher then as the wind is turning uh, back into the Atlantic, turning to the west. It's rather showery, a little bit beyond day 10. We go back to this much, much cooler uh, northwesterly flow, bringing showers into the north. And then as we get towards the end of this GFS run, which gets us to the 5th of July now, we're back to relatively cool and showery conditions through the first week of, uh, the first week of July. GM, the Canadian model, has that rich building across the country on Saturday in control for sunny too. So a nice weekend coming up. Early next week, we have these thundery areas of low pressure out to our south and to our west too. So again, very warm through the course of next week, but also looking really unstable. There could be thunderstorms affecting parts of the country through the course of next week, but also with some pretty hot temperatures, certainly to 30 degrees. Uh, go through to the end of the GM, we finish up with low pressure being developing over top of the country. So obviously that's cooling things down massively by day 10, certainly 29th of June, and turning much, much wetter too. A lot of variation with these thundery areas of low pressure through next week. So that's the big unknown about this, just how unsettled would it be next week. It does look as though the temperature is going to get a lot warmer, but how... How um, much will these troughs develop? Will we get actual areas of low pressure? If we do, not only will it be very warm and humid, it could also be uh, really quite wet. And it's a big question mark hanging over the Glastonbury Festival as well, I have to say. Did the Glastow update last night, which in its own terms was pretty good. It was a pretty decent update for Glastonbury. But I did sort of say that I wasn't sure that the pattern for next week was really pinged down. I'm still not entirely convinced that the pattern is totally convinced, um, pinged down for next week, actually, particularly later uh, next week. Things could get very wet next week, I think, but also very warm. It's almost like going into a tropical-type climate in some ways, perhaps. Uh, ECM, again, we've got that ridge over top of the country, bringing a lot of dry weather over weekend. It'll be a nice weekend. Into the early part of next week, the wind's in from the southeast. It's becoming hotter, but also starting to get more unstable too. More instability it's creeping into the atmosphere. There's the upper air temperatures. The Tuesday showing that the 15 Celsius ice firm is into some of the eastern parts of the country. At this time of year, 15 Celsius ice firm will generally get you to 30 degrees. So that's 86 Fahrenheit. But you're hotter than that in the extreme southeastern corner. That's Wednesday, again, hot, but also looking pretty unstable. 20 Celsius ice firm is beginning to flirt with the far southeastern uh, tip of the country. 15 Celsius ice firm covering most of England and Wales by this point. So we can expect temperatures to go up into the 30 Celsius by the middle of next week, most definitely away from Scotland and Northern Ireland anyway. 
That's Thursday, very slack, hot, uh, sort of melting part in, within the atmosphere, if you like, bubbling away and probably bringing up thunderstorms. A 20 Celsius ice firm is into this extreme southeastern corner. So, uh, again, that might get towards the mid-30 Celsius, somewhere like central London on uh, Thursday afternoon. Depend how much sunshine there is, depend how much thunder and how much rain there is. But it certainly looks now as though we're going to get pretty hot uh, next week. And then we go through to um, Friday, and it's still hot in the east, so it's just going to turn a little bit cooler out in the west. That's how we look at day 10, when increasingly it looks like low pressure is beginning to develop over the country. So the atmosphere is becoming, um, is wobbling a lot. There's a lot of uh, heavy showers probably being generated there. But look how extremely hot it is over France and going down in towards uh, Spain and Portugal. So looks like there's some very hot weather on the way over the continent. And that will get to us to some degree through next week. But so far, I don't think we're going to get that 20 Celsius, 25 Celsius ice firm to uh, the country. But it's interesting times what we're seeing here. These are the um, ECM ensembles from the Icelandic Met Office. So these are the options that we've got on the table at day 10, which is the 29th of, uh, of June. So um, we've got 17 members of the East Seven Summers with this ridge of above average heights from the Atlantic and extending into the UK. Below average heights are up to the northeast. So obviously they're bringing a lot of dry weather. Warm too. We're probably bringing up the wings from a southerly south beastly direction. So pretty hot and you will think quite dry uh, there. Then we've got 17, including the operational run. That's a run we was just looking at that had this low pressure to the west-southwest. They have the ridge to the east-southeast. So obviously they're hot. They bring the winds up from the southeast direction, but there's more instability involved with those 17, so they have a greater chance of producing heavy showers and thunderstorms. And then there's these 17 just here that are more unsettled. They're a more unsettled option. Low pressure is closer to us. High pressure is weaker. Uh, so they're probably the most unsettled option that we've got on the table. In two weeks' time... These are the options that we've got. This takes us into early July. This is the 4th of July, 360 hours away. Big changes by then. 17 members with a mid-Atlantic ridge through here and low pressure to the east. They're obviously a lot cooler. Winds are in from the north with those and quite unsettled. There's another 17 with high pressure centred towards Greenland and low pressure over Scandinavia, there again, bring winds back in from the north. And then there's 17, just with very slack heights across the country, probably in sort of a gentle, maybe quite showery, west or northwesterly flow. But it does look as though as we get towards the beginning of July, we sort of break, uh, break down any heat, uh, shove it away, and we go into a much cooler, fresher, but rather showery uh, regime, perhaps, through um, the first week of July. These are the options that have gone on the table within the CFS V2. Uh, so these are 500 mm heights broken down to wheat beers. The first week's beer takes us from the 19th to 25th of June. The coming week has above average heights to the east and below average heights to west southwest. Therefore, we bring winds up from a southerly to southeast. We're actually turning much warmer much hotter, but also quite unstable with a risk of heavy showers or thunderstorms. Then we go through to uh, week two, which is the 26th of June to the 2nd of July. Above average heights to the north and to the east, below average heights to the west to the south. That looks very unstable. Hot, southerly, southeasterly winds, but also low pressure generating instability and bringing risk of thunder. Week three is the 3rd to the 9th of July. Above average heights and across Central Europe, below average heights to the west of the UK. Probably rather cooler with that, more of a west south westerly flow, rather showery through that opening period of July. And then week four, which is the 10th to the 16th of July, brings the above average heights back across the country. So that's turning drier and would be pretty warm with the jet stream being pushed northwards. We might be seeing signs that as we get into July, although it begins off, starts off on uh, a rather cool and unsettled note, 
possibly turns drier and warmer as the month progresses. Could this be the start of the summer turning out to be quite hot, which is what we expected in the Gasworthy's summer forecast, of course, we shall see. Now, finally, just to say that if you're enjoying the videos at the moment, please can you consider becoming a patron uh, for Gasworthy. So we've got 62 uh, patrons. Hello and a big thank you to our 62 uh, patrons. Um, now, if you'd like to become a patron for Gasworth Vids, then all you need to do is come to the Gasworth Vids Patreon page. You sign up for a Patreon account, and you can pledge an ongoing monthly donation to Gasworth It can be anything from $1 a month upwards, so it doesn't have to be a large amount of money. But $1 a month upwards will uh, allow you to become a patron for Gasworth Vids. You'll get a mention in the videos. We'll say thank you so much for becoming a patron. Uh, for Gasworth is and um, that's absolutely great. Thanks so much to everybody uh, for becoming patrons. Big thank you to our 62 uh, patrons. Alternatively, you can give a donation through PayPal. This is Gasworth is PayPal page. You just come here, sign into your uh, PayPal account. I mean, send a donation to Gasworth is again. You get a mention in the videos. We'll say thank you so much uh, for doing that. And uh, whether you do it through page, Patreon or whether you do it through PayPal, uh, you'll get that mention if you want it. Some people have chosen to stay anonymous, and that's absolutely fine. But if you want to mention, then we're happy uh, to do that uh, for you, whether you become a patron or a donor. Uh, for Gals Webbies. You're helping us to pay for our content, helping us to pay for GalsWebbies.com, actually, website, and uh, keep the content online. So a huge thank you to all of our patrons and all of our donors. Thanks so much for doing that. Right, that's it for today's videos. We'll be back tomorrow with a week to 10 day video update. And uh, of course, we've got the next update for Glastonbury tomorrow as well, which should be quite an interesting watch. Uh, that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.